So uh, we just had a couple questions to ask everyone. If you've ever blown a fuse at your house, or if you've ever had trouble figuring out which circuit breaker was blown, because usually they don't flip all the way, they just kind of half cock, and then you got to go through each one to figure out which one is, uh, is blown. And uh, does everyone in here have internet access? Yes. These, these days, usually everyone has internet access. So what we decided to do is we made a circuit breaker control. And uh, my name is Matthew Valentino. I'm Danielle Ford, and our advisor to our project was Mike Otis. So our presentation outline. First, we'll go over what is a Raspberry Pi, a circuit breaker, um, web server, a relay, tensiometer, analog to digital converter, and a current transformer. And then we'll go through the hardware, the software, and then give you a conclusion and how we could have potentially extended our project if we had time. So what is a Raspberry Pi? A Raspberry Pi is basically a credit card size microcontroller which acts as a computer. Now it's not a computer in the sense where it has all the software downloaded onto it, it's just the brain. So you can download any software you want and you can get it to play video games, you can get it to be a media center, you can kind of adapt it in any way that you see fit. And that's why we thought that it was uh, the best match for our project. What is a circuit breaker? So circuit breaker is essential in today's world. It is the biggest safety mechanism in your house. So when you have your circuit breaker panel in your basement, it protects your house from when the current goes through or touch the power if it is too large of a value. Uh, what is a web server? So normally when you're browsing the internet, you're on a web server and you can either click on a hyperlink or type in a URL in the address bar and that will get you to a website. But through the internet connection, your browser connects to a web server by convert, uh, looking at uh, converting the domain, domain name into an IP address and then using the IP address to find that web server. So we've got uh, all four of our instruments that we used here. We used a relay, potentiometer, uh, analog to digital converter, and a current transformer. So a relay is an electromagnetic switch that cuts the power, I mean that is activated when a current is applied to it. And a uh, potentiometer is basically a variable voltage divider. So depending on how much you turn the knob, as you can see in the picture, you will take the voltage at a different point along this resistance. Uh, the ADD converter uh, converts a voltage to a decimal number. And the current transformer takes a current that is flowing through a wire in the center and it reduces it down <coughs> depending on uh, the turns ratio inside the current transformer. It will reduce it down to a current and a voltage that you can now use at a smaller level. Um, basically, right now I'm going to run you through the hardware that we used to connect the Pi with the circuit breaker. So the first thing we had was the ADD converter, and that measured a voltage that we were able to vary with the potentiometer. And then the Raspberry Pi took this digital number that the A to D gave us, and it would read it and determine when it was unsafe and when it should open the relay and stop supplying the value to it, the uh, voltage to it. Here we have the high power flow. So on the inside of this box, you see we start with this black wire up at number one, and that's really your hot lead. Now underneath here, you can't see it, there's one of these metal bars, and it's connected to this breaker, this breaker, and this breaker. So we put our main feed here, our main breaker, and then we fed this voltage now into our relay, which then came out and went to this bar out here, which supplied this same black uh, power to our load. So seven and eight represent our load taking that power and then coming back here to our white, which is our neutral. This is our low power flow. So the current comes through this black wire and goes through the current transformer. And as it goes through, it induces 
a voltage that goes to the potentiometer, and as you change the potentiometer, the A to D picks up the changed voltage and sends it to L pi. So the software for yeah, um, the software that we use in the Pi to to get it to know when it was an unsafe voltage, we had it monitor the A to D values. So these digital numbers that got spit out as it took this voltage in, it would the Pi would monitor this and recognize when it it went to an unsafe value and it would stop supplying the voltage through one of its general purpose uh, inner output ports and it would stop supplying the voltage to the relay, therefore cutting the high power to the load. So our web server we developed on our iPhone. It can go on any internet. You can use it on a tablet, iPad, just the internet on your computer. Um, the layout of it is it, it first reads to you your previous status. So it will say on and your output is one, please turn off, or off, your output is zero, and tells you to turn it on. And then it gives you the current status, which is if on, output's one, display's on, in red letters, and then it gives you the option of a button to turn it off. And if off, the output is one, and it displays, displays off in red letters and gives you, the, gives you the option of a button to turn it on. And then now in order to check whether or not you have blown a fuse. If your previous status was zero and your current status is zero, then you know that you're not getting power to your load and something something has gone wrong. These are the two layouts of the phone in each situation. Previous status is zero, so it was off. Please turn it on. And then it says the status of the breaker now is on, and you have the option to turn it off with the button. Um, we made sure that our project met several engineering constraints, like uh, health and safety. Mainly this is safe because it's an extra set of protection so that your home not only has the circuit breaker that will trip if anything goes wrong, but also this relay will trip so that you don't even have to worry about your circuit breaker tripping. It's also sustainable because uh, a lot of the parts that we use have a long life expectancy, so you won't really have to change out any of these parts. A lot of them will last long, long, long time, longer than longer than you're going to need. Uh, manufacturability, because we were able to get all of our parts from Lowe's, the Raspberry Pi online. It was very easy, if, if given directions, put together. And social and political, it makes it convenient for people to use. You can just use it on any type of internet. And because it's a web server, you can use it anywhere that internet access is available. So uh, to summarize it up, ours is platform adaptable, like we said. Um, you can use it on any type of iPad, iPhone, tablet, Droid, anything that has connection to the internet. You just put in the IP address. And uh, this provided us with some great hands-on experience because as we were running into several different problems, we were able to fix it and go around those problems. Like we started working with an Android app and we ran into problems developing it and getting it to connect. So we, <coughs> we chose this other route going with the web server and we found it to be more robust and that we could actually get it to connect from anyone's phone, any, any internet connectable so if we were to extend our project, we could have made it so that our Raspberry Pi didn't have to work off the um, connection from an outlet, it could work off the circuit breaker power. And we could also make it so that we wouldn't need this green wire, we would just be able to have a wireless dongle with something in there so that it could connect to Wi-Fi without having to get plugged into uh, Ethernet cable. I'd like to say a special thanks to our <coughs> advisor, Mike Oder, to Aaron uh, Reed. Aaron Reed for helping us with the web server, to Dan Kovar for giving us some great insight
guide on how to actually get the circuit breaker to work. Dr. Cavalier, slide over to the gentleman. Uh, Alvaro helped us with the A to Z converter, and uh, he really helped us through our project. Uh, our parents gave us support and uh, helped us through this, and everyone for being Coming. here and watching us through this. both circuit breakers. The first one I turned on would be the main, and then the next one I turned on would be just to the load. Now we have it set to off right now, just as a safety precaution so that when you plug it in and turn them on, it doesn't just start going randomly. So Danielle can now turn this on with her phone. <coughs> when the internet loads. No, no. potentiometer spun all the way up, it is delivering an unsafe voltage to our A to Z converter, which our Raspberry Pi was able to detect. And now if we leave this load on, and Danielle tries to turn on the, the power back, it will start up and then kick off. So that's saying now, okay, it's not on, so my previous status is zero, and my current status is zero, something is wrong. So now if I turn the load back down, she has the option to now turn the, gen the, the motor back on with her phone. Oh, just that reject, not that way. Cool. because we wanted something that was easily relatable to. So everyone in here has seen a circuit breaker, dealt with a circuit breaker, every homeowner has a circuit breaker, and we just decided it was a project that everyone can really connect to. Okay. Does the uh, Raspberry Pi have Bluetooth uh, capability? Um, yes, the Raspberry Pi has Bluetooth capability, but it's not built in. A Bluetooth module. Right, we would have needed a Bluetooth module. It actually comes with a uh, with a Ethernet cable port. Okay. So we were able to just hardwire the Ethernet cable right in, create a static IP address mm -hmm. on the Raspberry Pi, and connect the web server to it that way. Okay. Anyone else? Right, so we we pull the Bluetooth up and go more with it. <coughs> well, it could fail in a couple different ways. It could fail if uh, something happens internally with our connection. If, say, uh, someone tries too many times to turn it on when it's overloaded, that might cause uh, like a heat problem and something could short or something might happen that way. Or uh, it could fail just if, if someone isn't smart with it. If someone uh, tries to attach too much load and uh, and isn't isn't careful about it, 
but that's why we also have the circuit breakers to then back up our relay, because if the relay fails, then now the circuit breaker will trip, and you don't have the convenience of being able to switch it on from your phone, but at least it has that extra layer of safety. It's the second form of protection for the circuit breaker itself. So. Are they isolated? Is the IP address unique to? Um, yes. What happens is we have to create a static IP address for this Raspberry Pi because on campus here, every time that you connect, it gives you a different IP address. So in order for us to have a single web server that you can type in the same address every time, we had to create a static IP address, and that allowed us to now say, okay, this is the web server that you type in. When you type it in, you're going to connect to this Raspberry Pi every time. So, so you can literally switch it for just the one mode, the Raspberry Pi that you need to have. So does it allow the same IP address for something you need to do? Um, no, I can, I can put a separate IP address to a second Raspberry Pi and, and make it static also. Okay. What, what you're trying to say is that in order for it to work, that device has to have its own IP address. Okay. If Correct. it's not communicating because the default D DHCP is giving it a different one every five hours, it's not going to work. Right, because then now I'll have to find go in to code it, find what the IP address is, to then type